Okay, here we are at Clock Auction. Once again, we're previewing another sale. This one is on November the 12th. It will be our second last sale of the year. We've had a super duper year and I thank everyone for that. Look at this, a wonderful November sunny day outside. So here we go, we have a great sale. Lots of mid-century and lots of art and bronzes, etc., etc. Et so we're gonna start off this wonderful desk. It's mahogany with a gilt metal base, pedestal base on it, but look at the wonderful grain on it. Little brass trim here and then on top, absolutely great burl walnut top. Drawers down the side. This came from a large manor estate, custom made by Vladimir Kagan. Has the label on the inside of it. Atop this, here we have a very nice original patina counterbalance Tiffany LC Tiffany lamp. Beautiful shade. The shade has a bit of an issue on the inside, but it doesn't come through, so we feel it was in the making of the glass or whatever. But check our website out on that one over here. <coughs> Actually, from a different estate. Look at the size of this and the beautiful colors LC Tiffany. Favril vase, that big lion with the big long tail. I hope he doesn't swing it and knock that over there now. That'll be Whitney's deal. Over here we have, look at the grain on this rosewood. It's a tambour. I would say it was probably a bar with the mirror back on it. Nice with the tambour, it has two pullouts there. Top this, PJ Mene. Nice big large bronze sculpture, the horse and the foal. Looks like it's all original. Came from a local estate again, a lot of local stuff here. In particular, one of my favorites of the sale came to the same home as the Vladimir Kagan. This is by an artist, Peter Michael Adams. Just look at this table. Beautiful with the wood and the grain. Great investment table, I would say. I did find one, I think came up in 2006 was the last time I could find one. Before we go in the main room, we have a lot of great bronze. Look at the size of this large one of the Arab boy. Great original patina, but large size. I believe there's an artist called Charles Massey or Massey. Okay, the main room, not overly crowded, but great items. So that's what the difference here we have. This is a big bronze, one of a lot of bronze that came in from Brooklyn. It's by an artist called Godet, but just I'm standing along so you get an idea of the size. But you can always look at them at clarkeny.com. It's sitting on top of an absolutely magnificent petrified wood table. Weighs a ton, so whoever buys it, make sure they know that picking up. Look at the grain on the top of that, has a heavy metal base. Over here, green color, as everyone likes it, not just because we're Irish in green, but it's uh, a really nice dark green, great for the, the library and the den or whatever. Each, each side of it, we have a pair of tables by Philip and Kelvin Laverne. I believe they're the Picasso tables. Nice to have a pair. Look at this girl sitting down here on her own. I believe that's signed Moya, good big size, has a Latin feel to it. We've had, we had two of these in the last sale, did very well. This time we've a set of four. Charles and Ray Ames, padded chairs. Here we've a set of four stools, sort of vintage as opposed to mid-century, but I believe they're called La, Pal La Palama stools, or La Palma. Let's not forget the smalls. Okay, we have one of collection of Royal Crown Derby in the sale. Once again, Clark and Y. More bronze, I believe there's a Russian bronze up here. This is very nice. We've a lot of nice little lighting pieces, but look at this. Uh, this is Handel. This is the base and this is the shade. Nearly like the Tiffany shade outside. We have this Galley vase in here. This is Lotz. We have this uh, door knocker, sort of after Paul Evans, we believe. We have these little handles, great handles for your chest of drawers or whatever. This is by Dave McGarry. We've had bronzes by him before, this uh, Paris. Here we have an interesting vase. If I don't break the glass getting to it, this is marked Tiffany Studios. LC Tiffany Studios has an overlay of pewter and has the, the glass inserts on it. So uh, we're saying marked Tiffany Studios, not saying it is. Up here we have a lot of great Rene Lalique in this cell. I believe this is called the Peruche vase. Look at the nice, the nice colors on that. And we have the bowl here. We have a lot of bronze sculptures by a guy called Nano Lopez in the sale. This is the cat. More Rene Lalique. Lots of clocks that Kenny will get to. It's going to keep, they, keep, they didn't open the doors for me. They must have known I was coming. Look at the color on this Lalique vase. So lots of Lalique in this sale. Here's a bronze sculpture of Franklin. Once again, Clark NY. Get near the holiday so you can nearly buy some 
presents early. We've got two lots of bronze boxes there. We've got this nice Erte bronze. I believe it's called Beloved. Look at the size of this Nano Lopez. Just walked in the door recently with these three pieces of glass. We believe they're not signed, but we believe they're Chihuly. Have a sort of Vanini feel, but they're really nice looking too. I'm sure the people that are in the know know. We have this, uh, oh, I'm about tired of opening that. We have a pair of uh, discs down there by Pepe Mendes. Um, okay, with this nice little set here. I believe it's by an artist called, let me not believe it. Let me look at and tell you who it's by. It's by an artist called Pizer. Two, uh, four small cups, two large ones. Nice piece of mize in here. Back around below here, lots of clocks, which Kenny will get to. <laughs> okay, moving away from the smalls. Nice sconces here. Look at this for a wonderful pair of leaf sconces. They look like they're in wonderful shape. Another pair here. This came from the Larchmont Manor home. It's uh, once again Vladimir Kagan. It matches the desk with beautiful gilt metal base and a bright burl top and the mahogany trim. Moving right along, came in on a walk in Wednesday. This mirror here, it's bronze, we attributed to Oscar Bach. Nice art deck over the periods, lying up against what we have a pair of these Louis Philippe style marble top cabinets. This is a nice swivel chair, mid century swivel chair. Okay, Paul McCobb, single chair, unfortunately, wish we had two. But nice, look at that, nice big size to lolly in or recline in. Here we have this table, we believe it's Ralph Lauren, we have the two. Uh, chrome pedestals underneath there. Atop that, look at this big carving here, just look at the sizes. We believe it's by a woman called Weschler, came from her estate in Long Island. I lost my pad, so I can't remember the first name is, but once again, C-L-A-R-K-E-N-Y.com. Here, this only came in last week, so it's actually just added. This multi-drawer, Paul McCobb dresser. Different, but nice with the side drawers and all the multi-drawers. Top this, we have this, look at this iron lamp. Nearly like Edgar Brandt or one of those guys. Heavy. I'm a car collector myself, but I, I can't tell you where this uh, trunk came from, but I'm sure if you need it, it's a great thing to have, and you might get yourself a bargain here. So all the all the bits to it for the for lining it up. It, open, it actually opens up at the front and drops down. Look at the base there. So you have that. Okay, more chandeliers. We've got onyx chandeliers, reverse painted. Have a look at this table here, this is very nice, came from Long Island. Unfortunately, little as is on the top, but it's Italian, has an Italian label on it mid-century with the X base. We have lots of Ralph Lauren furniture in it, in the sale with commodes, chests of drawers. We have this nice tall case clock, not sure who it's by, but it's, oh, it's by J. Pope of London. I think Kenny will deal with that. We have nice and wonderful uh, hurricane chandeliers. Look at this one with the quality on it. Missing a glass, but it's on the, on the door, so I'm sure you can find that. Nice big size of the finials, alabaster chandeliers. Look at this for a big pair of, I don't know, you can put them out in your barn or out in the garden, put torches in them for the kids. Nice with the iron back, handmade. Beautiful little uh, vanity and bench here, Italian. Just wonderful quality. And look at the gilding and the paint on it, great for one of your kids' rooms, nice with a little mirror. Just really super duper. Here we have a Georgian mahogany chest on stand. This came from Mayo Pack, New York. Wonderful grain. A few little as is spots on it, a little bit missing. Marjorel desk, French oak Marjorel desk. Nice tray top table sitting on top of heavy with the brass, brass trim on the glass. Gonna swing around here. We're gonna come down here. We have a pair of these. Just get an idea of the size of these hurricane chandeliers. Ready to go, copper pots we have. We have this nice Louis XV1 style gilt. Center tape looks like it has this, uh, a silk needle point in there. Atop that, a pair of these. These are really great. We had a big pair last time. They were as is, but this is a big pair. And they're not as is, they're in good shape. So check these out. Nice to have a pair. We have this Arnie Jacobson. Egg chair and ottoman here. Egg chairs that. We egg chair, our style egg chair, not them. We have this nice oval mid-century table. Nice little bronze mounts on the feet. Swinging along more Ames pad chairs. We have this sort of nice, I suppose, acrylic or lucite base coffee table with the ball or the severe, we might say in it. Okay, this bronze here, I believe, is by Sutman. 
And this one here is, I believe, Kiel Kielega. Once again, Tarkham, I don't count myself out talking about that. Here we have a pair of leathered upholstered chairs on chrome base, chrome frames and ottomans. These, I believe, are by Herzberger for pace. Over here, strange to have two Max Kuhn pieces in the sale. Do we get the Max Kuhn over there? I don't know, we have this wonderful coffee table. It's signed down here. This is also Max Kuhn, but it's a nice big size. You could even make a coffee table out of it or hang it on the wall, so that's nice to have. Do we have this uh, wonderful casino sofa here? Swinging up here, I really love this table. One, two, three, four, five. Look at this, looks like it's a walnut, but these are Tiffany inserts. I believe it's called the Janus table by Dunbar, nice early table. And we've one lot as a set of four of these cases. You're thinking of going away for the holidays, one for each of the kids and one for yourself. This I believe is by Picolt, another big large bronze. These bronzes are very interesting here because they have a lot of age. We have two of them, and they're by a guy called Ingersoll Aitken, A-I-T-K-E-N. Pretty rare. We have a pair. I attributed these lamps to uh, Samuel Yellen, I believe. Need a bit of rewiring, but nice to have a pair. It's a hand wrought iron and all that set of, I believe, 11 of these are sort of Regency style chairs or Adam style with the caning. Ralph Lauren, this table is Ralph Lauren as well. We got the cat, now keep a tiger in your tank sitting right up there on top, look at the size of him, I believe it's Enzo. This china cabinet is really super. I know they're not in vogue, but when they come back in vogue, this was probably a great investment. Look at the size of it. It has a name on it. It's, it has a brand label on the back of it, so Clark NY having forgotten, of course, the name. Nice pair of mirrors. Look at this chandelier here. It's, when we get to the lighting, good big size, great gilding on it, balloon form with the beading. It looks like it's a wonderful shape. This was taken out of apartment in Long Island. It was working when we took it out. Now we've got the right weather for these. Look at this. Bring a bit of warmth to your fire with these sunflowers and the end irons that go with them. Big size. Just a nice, fun, good conversation piece. If you ever stuck in front of the fireplace with someone you don't want to talk to, you'll have those to mention. Beautiful beaded chandelier here. Nice hardwood Chinese table. And swing around here. We have a triple pedestal mahogany table. People like still like the triple pedestals, which is good. It has about four leaves. We have the Ralph Lauren bed in the back. We have the parquetry, our inlaid uh, abattante. We have secretaires over there. We even have, for the likes of myself, we have this leather recliner, contemporary. These are a wonderful pair of Venetian chandeliers. Nice to have a pair of great size. You can string them down the hallway. Have a look at this chandelier. Beautiful quality, patinated bronze. But look at the, look at the workmanship on the bronze here. Down below, you have the finial in the center. So that's nice, as decorative as you like it. Do we have anything hiding back there? We do, but we'll avoid going in there. But there are a few Ralph Lauren pieces you can check out on our website. We have a set of these. These chairs just came in yesterday. Three nice leather mid-century style chairs. Very comfy, ready to go. And look at this lamp here. Before we say our bid adieu, we're just going to have a look at this lamp. This is Duffner and Kimberley. Geometric lamp. Really beautiful colour. Well, this is lit up. It's fabulous. We have it lit up on the site. So go and look at it there. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye and thank you for viewing. Hopefully we will see you for the previews, which are Thursday, Friday and Saturday from noon to 6 p.m. prior to the sale. If you want to get anything in consignment into our December sale, you still have time and we're hunting. So uh, with that, I'll say goodbye and thank you. Hi, and welcome to our November 12th auction preview video of Asian Arts. We'll start here with this wonderful example of a Korean Atlas book. Um, this is also referred to as an Atlas of the Heavens from Above. So it's just a beautiful example. There are nine maps and then at the back, I'm sorry, it's this way. There are these inscriptions. I'm assuming it's some form of a key, uh, but really quite interesting. This is estimated at 1,500 and came in on one of our walk and Wednesday appraisal days. Uh, this is a unusual guan type Chinese vase. So it's these four vases and they're all formed together. It does have a mark on the underside with all of these various glazes, really quite beautiful. And this is estimated at 600 to 900. This is a nice little gilt shrine. So carved wood shrine with the metal mounts. 
just see if I can open this for you, which, here you go. So here's the interior. Just a nice little Buddha shrine. This is one of my favorite lots in the sale. This is a water buffalo on beautiful carved wood fitted stand with a mirror. But if you look here, you can see the silver inlay. And also there's silver inlay throughout the water buffalo. So I just want you to take a look, close up look here. You can just see the beautiful detailing and even the stand is beautifully carved. So it's just a wonderful example. And um, here are two Chinese hexagonal vases with dragons and flowers. Here's the underside. Just a sweet example. Um, and actually there are two Chinese enamel decorated plaques. Here's the first, blue and white. It is signed of two figures beneath a tree. Um, nicely framed in the circular frame. We have a piece of Chinese export silver, so it's a lidded chalice or cup. On a footed stand, there are some condition issues, but really quite sweet and it is signed. Um, here we have an archaic style bronze. So again, this is Chinese. Um, with a Nixu handle, and then this is kind of a beast. It looks, I think it might be a water buffalo, but I'm not sure. Here's the underside, but really quite nice. One of the stars of the show is going to be this beautiful gilt bronze and polychrome Buddha. Um, this is Ming Dynasty, most surely 17th century. Really just beautiful quality. You can still see the gilding to their face. If you look to the underside, there's just great age to this. Good condition. I mean, there are a few condition issues, but only what's to be expected. Um, and then if we look to the reverse, you're going to see the red paint. Just a wonderful example. Really, really very nice. Um, a nice necklace here of coral and amber. Big amber beads, but I really like this piece because I, although this is a condition issue, um, I do believe that this is a repair. But if you just look at these really interesting, the way that they fixed it are these kind of scroll form, I don't know, but it, it here's all the pieces together and it's really so beautifully done. And this is estimated at three to 500. This is one of two pieces of Japanese kutani in the sale. So this is a sensor and kind of this temple form um, and it is in two pieces and just the pierced ornate floral work throughout. This wonderful gilt finial with the red enamel work, really quite nice. We have this Japanese cloisonne vase with birds and flowers against the black ground. Just a nice, um, just is so nicely done. From one of our walk-in Wednesday appraisal days, we have this small blue and white Chinese dish with chrysanthemums. You can see the six character mark to the underside. Um, so here is an X Sotheby's. And this is a beautiful enamel decorated Chinese kettle of sorts. Let's see, and I just want to lift this up so you can see the underside. So really quite nice. There's a hairline to the bottom, but in otherwise good condition, you can see that this fitted piece is missing, but really an interesting item. This is Japanese Edo period. It is a carved wood lacquered Fu Lion, um, but what makes it really nice is that it has these lacquered eyes. You can see that it was probably fitted somewhere. Um, not sure where, there are some condition issues, but that's only to ex be expected with the age, um, but really quite nice at 1,000 to 1,500. Here is a second Chinese enamel decorated sign plaque with figures set beneath a pine tree in this kind of garden pavilion. Um, and this does go together with our first Chinese blue and white plaque. This is another one of my favorites in the sale. Beautiful Chinese blue and white vase, but you can see just the animals here. So we do have some deer, there's some cranes, um, beautiful carved wood top with these Rui pendants that match really well to the border here. So there's just this Rui design, a beautiful fitted carved wood base, um, nice size. And then we have the blue double ring mark to the underside. And here we have a more contemporary grouping of Chinese objects. There are 10 articulated and enamel decorated fish. Um, so various sizes, various shapes, but they're just beautifully done. And I think they're so sweet. Moving on to some Japanese prints. These two prints are together. So one is by Kosunobu and the other one is by Koitsu. So we have this wonderful tree here with kind of a garden with walking figures in the back. Um, and the second is the ship at dusk, so really quite nice, and the two together are at three to 500. 
From our Queen's Estate, we have this Chinese brown glazed bowl. Um, and the, what makes it interesting though is this turtle surround. So we have these five turtles that are within the glaze. Uh, two pieces together, so we have this Chinese crackle glaze, blue and white um, vase with birds, flowers, and figures. And this is from Park Bernay. And then we have this Chinese Fami Verit vase that was mounted as a lamp, so there is a missing finial and it is drilled through the base. Um, this is a Chinese Fami rose vase. This is Ex Christie's East. Um, but what makes it really nice is I think this ruffled edge opening. So that's just really unusual and nice. Here's the underside. And this is with another Sang de Boeuf vase. From the same estate in Queens, this is a Chinese Fami Verit vase. Um, this is an ex Sotheby's Arcade Auctions vase. But it's just nice with the chrysanthemum, multicolored chrysanthemum enamel decoration, the Rui pendants here. Um, if you take a look at the underside, and it does come with this fitted wood top. Ming Dynasty um, underglaze iron red lamp, or vase mounted as a lamp, I should say, which makes it nice that it is underglaze. You can see the crackle design here. Um, and then again, from our Queen's Estate, we have this Sang de Boeuf vase with the lion's head, and this one is X Phillips. So you can see the hang tag here. And these nice uh, foo dog head with ring handles. Pair of Chinese blue and white Foo dogs, one with a smaller animal and then one with a ball under their foot, but really nice, the two together. Um, again, from our Queen's Estate, we have this bronze mirror. So you can see the underside, just a nice example. Chinese Fami, Ro Fami Verit vase, um, calligraphy with one to one side with the seal stamps, and then this landscape design to the alternate and then we have a four character mark to the underside. Chinese Happy Buddha in blue and white. Um, just sweet. There is an impressed mark to the underside, a lozenge form. Here we have a Celadon blue and white vase, landscape vase with figures and stag. So really quite sweet. And then we have bats to the alternate side. Here is an underside. We're gonna jump back to one of my favorite lots in the sale. Um, just this really wonderful, Chinese carved coral figural grouping. Um, what's really so nice is you can really see the original form. So you can see the kind of curved form of the coral branch, and then they still utilize the natural form with the arms. And it's depicting these beautiful Quan Yin with a child seated beneath a pine tree. It's really so nice. This is estimated at three to 5,000. Um, and I'm excited to see where this piece goes. So we're gonna jump over to this piece first. So this is one of four attributed to Kitiao Masanobu, Japanese prince um, of courtesans. So really quite nice. This is one of four, each are in, lotted individually. This is estimated at four to 600, so really quite nice. There is one larger example. All came from one estate. Um, you can also see these nice chairs. So we have this pair of chairs. Um, and then we're going to end the Asian arts preview with this really interesting piece. So this is a Chinese watercolor painting and it's just so beautifully done. It's depicting this beautiful robed female and her arms are outstretched to a cockatoo on this bird stand or bird cage. Um, it's just beautifully depicted. Uh, a state fresh, really quite interesting, estimated at three to 500 and it is also signed. So if you can just look over here to the signature and the seal stamps, it's so beautifully done that I can't imagine it's not done by someone who was known and hopefully known for this type of painting. She's just so beautiful. Um, and of course I like it because there's a bird in it. So that wraps it up for our selection of Asian arts coming up on November 12th and we hope to see you there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's my favorite time of year. And do you know what time that is? It's auction time. The initial rug in question may have its origins in the Markazi province of Iran. Yes, that's right. It's potentially a Saruk rug, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at these beautiful birds. Now this rug could possibly originate 
from a Central Asian country that was once part of the Soviet Republic. Its distinct geometric composition and tribal features strongly suggest a Kazakh influence. This rug might have its origins in what was once known as Constantinople, but is now referred to as Istanbul. It appears to be a possible Oshak rug, characterized by its loose and lengthy pile. Now this rug could potentially originate from the lesser known village of Hariz in the East Azerbaijan province in Northwestern Iran. Now these rugs typically feature a medallion and geometric design. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is a potential Hariz carpet. Now this impeccably crafted, handmade Pakistani Bakara rug which draws its inspiration from Turkmen prototypes known as techies. Here's a little gem, ladies and gentlemen. It's one of two carpets, each displaying vibrant colors and featuring a design with three medallions. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Hamadan carpet. Now, a Hamadan serves as an umbrella term for a diverse range of carpets woven in the vicinity of the city bearing the same name. You could come across this rug in the bustling metropolis of Almaty, a renowned trading center, likely because it's a Kazakh rug. Just gaze upon this energetic and vibrantly colored hand-knotted runner. Here I have a Hariz rug originating from northwestern Iran. These rugs are great for high traffic areas. This is due to the high quality wool yarn used in the pile, which is intrinsically knotted onto a cotton warp. The last carpet I'd like to present to you today is of generous size, featuring vivid colors and an attractive pattern. Now moving right along to our amazing clocks. Right here, I have three distinct Jeger Lacoute Pendulet Baguette eight day desk clocks, each fe featuring a unique finish. The first one has a faux lapis lazuli finish executed in enamel. The next executed in black enamel. The third, a satin gold finish. Very rare, hard to come by clocks, ladies and gentlemen. Next, I'm presenting a variety of distinctive carriage clocks, including repeaters and some equipped with alarms. You'll discover a selection of English, French, and Tiffany & Co. clocks among them. Here, I'd like to introduce one of my personal favorites, a Chelsea eight-day ship's bell figural clock designed in the shape of a ship's wheel. Next, I have a collection of four globe automaton clocks. Each clock has an interesting moving part. These are quite fun to admire. Here I have a beautiful German French bulldog moving eyes clock. I absolutely love how they captured the spirit of a French bulldog. This clock is a cased Waltham gimbaled mechanical ship's clock would likely be commonly found at sea. And now I'd like to present a Tiffany & Co. aesthetic style mantel clock with a cathedral design. This clock features a potential bronze frame complemented by hand-painted porcelain columns and plaques throughout. The first watch I'd like to share with you is a vintage Jardor chronograph pilot's watch. This watch is fitted with an extraordinary Valjou movement, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very sought after watch and hard to find in this condition. Next, I have a wonderful stainless two-tone Rolex on a aftermarket leather band. Jumping right along here to some pocket watches, I have two absolutely wonderful railroad grade pocket watches. Next is my favorite pocket watch. That's because it's a jump hour, ladies and gentlemen. Very hard to find. Here I have a very thin Tiffany Co. 18 karat gold pocket watch. 
I have a counterpart here in platinum, same brand, and a couple of lovely ladies bracelet watches. Those are just a few of our watches in this upcoming sale. How could we have an auction without a camera, ladies and gentlemen? And I'd like to offer you this absolutely exquisite Hasselblad camera collection. We have the camera, a 2000 FC, number of lenses and accoutrements to boot. I can tell you that this camera and equipment was owned by a professional photographer. Great condition here, ladies and gentlemen. Something you surely want to add to your collection and to shoot with. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving right along to the Militaria section. The very first sword I'd like to share with you is an extraordinary Japanese Imperial Navy Gendai Kaiganto sword. Beautiful katana here, ladies and gentlemen, and naval mounts. The next is a Japanese Wagasashi sword equipped with a kazooka. Here I have an impressive Japanese World War II Type 95 Shingunto NCO sword crafted by the Suya Company of Tokyo and featuring an aluminum handle. Spectacular, hard to find sword, ladies and gentlemen. Next, I have a signed katana with a Kikamon stamp. Absolutely beautiful katana here. The last sword I'd like to share with you is an Imperial German Saxon Officer's Saber adorned with the initials of King Frederick Augustus III of Saxony. All right, that concludes my segment, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to visit our website, ClarkNY.com, to view all of our amazing items for this upcoming November 12th sale, beginning here at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at Clark Auction Gallery. Happy bidding! Hi there, welcome to Clark Auction's November Fine Art Auction Preview. I'll be sharing with you some of the highlights from the auction, which includes an important collection of Al Hirschfeld illustrations and a selection of African-American art featuring the artist Vincent D. Smith. I'm now going to start with a Singaporean artist named Tan Cho T. We have four of these works which are not cataloged or allotted in the fine art section, but they're in our oriental section later in the sale. As you can see, he's an artist known for doing depictions of life in Singapore and the surrounding areas. We now move on to a print, a portrait print, by Chuck Close of Alex Katz, the artist. This is number 75 of 75 uh, edition of prints. And above that, we have the first of our African-American section by Vincent D. Smith the uh, jazz musicians, and this is estimated at six to nine thousand. We're now moving on to the remaining uh, Tan Cho Tees selection here, and moving over to the next large work that we have of musicians by the American artist William Gruper. Uh, this is a fabulously, a fabulous large work, and we do have some damage on it, but that can be repaired. Moving above that, we have the first of two Louis Bemelmans. This is a watercolor on board, and it's estimated at four to six. Now moving again along, up upper, we have another Vincent D. Smith of the sharecroppers. And moving down, another Smith of Nocturne. And one of the highlights below that is a French illustration by George Mateus. This uh, comes from the Coombs Gallery and was at MoMA's art lending program and it comes from a direct descendant of the purchaser at the museum. We're now going to uh, the first of the Al Hirschfelds, Some Like It Hot. We've got Marilyn Monroe and Tony Curtis. It's a great illustration from 1959. And above that, we have Kojak, Who Loves You, Baby? Uh, it's from TV Guide in 1977, another Al Hirschfeld. And then we're going to now move over to another Vincent D. Smith, done in 1955. And below that on the floor, we've got an Ernest Critchcow illustration by another African-American artist. And this is estimated at three to five thousand. 
Moving around, we have uh, a screen by Petrodi done in the 1940s. Uh, and then we move to the wall where we have a 19th century American painting, unknown artist, but it's a lovely depiction of a boy and girl, and that's estimated at two to three thousand. We're now going to move over to another Vincent D. Smith. This one was done in the 70s. It's work on paper, and this is estimated at three to four thousand. Going above here, we have another Bemelmans of the famous Madeline, and this is estimated at two to three thousand. We're now moving down to the contemporary uh, photographer John Patrick Dugdahl. Below that is a really exciting Abraham Walkowitz uh, etching done in the 1920s. It's a rather rare print uh, at six to nine thousand. And we now move over to the Monkeys, also by Al Hirschfeld, that is estimated at three to five thousand. And below that, we have this really exciting Wizard of Oz by Al Hirschfeld, which is estimated at twenty to thirty thousand. Moving along the wall, we're going up high again. We have another John Patrick Dugall. And then coming down, we have yet another exciting Vincent D. Smith, and that is estimated at six to nine thousand. And below that we have William Stanley Hayter, the British artist. This is an original work on paper and its lyrical forms, and uh, that is estimated at a thousand to fifteen hundred. We now move to a maritime picture by William uh, Stubbs, uh, and this was done in the early 20th century, and it has an estimated, uh, it's estimated at two to three thousand. We're now in the main gallery, and we're going to look at some other items here. We're going to start with up top, which we have three examples by the British artist Barbara Hepworth, three prints. Each print is estimated at two to three thousand, and below that we have yet another Vincent D. Smith work done in 1964. We're now moving along. We have this fabulous nocturnal moon by the Australian artist Peter Link. And moving along, we have some more Vincent Smiths. Uh, we have a Baskin at top. Uh, we've got George Gross prints, Salvador Dali prints, and the next thing that we'd like to look at is by a contemporary British artist named P.J. Crook. What's interesting about her is she's also painted the frame. We're now looking along here. We've got a Russian artist named Grista Bruskin, and this is a print, and it's estimated at $1,200 to $1,800. Next up, we have a work by Howard Mandel, interesting thing about this work, it was exhibited at the Met Museum in New York in 1950. Moving along the wall, we have a, a picture by Jennings Toffel. It's called The Conflict. Next, we're moving along to an exciting picture by Nicola Simbari of a landscape. Uh, this was done in the 1980s and has an estimate of 1,000 to 1,500. Next up, we have an interesting maritime picture by the African-American artist Joe Selby, who worked in Florida. Above that, we have a Mexican artist named Francis Cornell. Next up, we have this fabulous nude portrait by the German artist Nissel, which is estimated at two to three thousand. We come to an interesting contemporary artist named Helena Mazapa, a Russian Venezuelan artist, and they're estimated at a mere six to eight hundred dollars. And for those Hungarian collectors, we have a Vissely painting of uh, some carts on a road, uh, a painting by the Circle of Collins, a landscape. We have a circle of uh, Tylee Rainey, which is another cart scene. 
As we pan along, we've got some great examples of Louis Eichhardt prints and also some German Expressionist prints. And that wraps it up for this sale. So we look forward to seeing you on the 12th and thank you for watching. Hi and welcome to the November 12th preview video of Jewelry and Silver. We have here this wonderful Bucciolati silver tray. It is in the Art Nouveau style, so you can see these beautiful handles, just really the height of Art Nouveau design. From the same estate, we have this wonderful Bucciolati silver lidded serving dish. So really quite nice with a nice floral finial. Um, just an interesting piece of a grouping. This is Cartier, so we have the quiver of arrow handles, this wonderful design here, and it is a very sweet hand mirror. This is German Hanau silver, and this is by George Roth. Really quite nice, pierced border. You can see the central medallions. It's really beautiful in design. Jumping forward is a really unusual piece of Russian silver. Um, this is by Louis Kopenheim, or Kopenheim, I should say. Um, wonderful. This is a cigarette case, but it held several segments of cigarettes and it just this is really nice kind of accordion design and then of course we have the color gem cabochon closure and the striated design really quite sweet this is one of several collections of Russian silver and enamel spoons in the sale so this one has five examples there's one with six and I believe there's a third with another five this is a three-piece Anton Mickelson, so kind of a different venue here is this mid-century silver. So this is Anton Mickelson, and it's a three-piece tea service. Moving on to some Italian, we have an Italian 800 silver lidded uh, terrine or punch bowl with ladle. Nice hand hammer design to the ladle itself and this beautiful floral design to the body of the vessel. Another Italian silver vase, this is 800 silver. Um, and you can see these scroll form frames with the central blue cabochon. From the same estate, we have this multicolor blue and green enamel Russian silver tea strainer with the gold wash. Um, we have this teacup and saucer, again, Russian silver with enamel design. And individually, we have this pair of Russian silver and enamel decorated swan form napkin ring holders. Jumping back, this is one of the first lots we'll see today from the estate of Audrey Flashner. This is a miniature painting of the Taj Mahal in this beautiful fitted case. So, so nice when they come in these fitted cases. I like that. Another example in a fitted case is this three-piece silver suite with fish. Um, beautiful design, and this is from Blackington Company. This is Gorham, so it's a Gorham Art Nouveau mesh purse in silver. Um, and it's been repurposed, so now it is actually a shoulder strap purse. So it's really quite sweet, big enough to fit a cell phone, I tried. Um, and it's really just a really nice design with this chrysanthemum pattern. So very sweet. Um, here we have each are individually lotted, but these are both Archibald Knox for Tudric, and they are pewter. So we have this wonderful pewter lidded vessel and then this pewter vase with enamel decoration in blues and greens. Each are from a new Milford estate and individually lotted. So now it's interesting to move from some silver items to some solid gold items. So each of these are 18 karat gold and Tiffany and Company individually lotted. So we have this wonderful circular Tiffany 18 karat gold vanity box. We have this Again, Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold rectangular vanity box with rounded shoulders, a Tiffany 18 karat gold vanity dish, and then this collection of six Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold spoons. And each are individually lotted with all of the weights, measurements, etc. on our website. Moving forward to some jewelry, we have this 18 karat gold mounted carved jade pendant with diamond accents. Next door from a Mamaronek estate, we have this wonderful 14 karat gold fish with seed pearls and enamel decoration with its buddy here in solid gold. Next door, we have this wonderful retro or vintage 14 karat yellow gold oversized 14 karat gold pendant with a variety of cabochons in colored gems. It's just beautiful. Really quite li like, th like this piece and it's at four to six hundred. Moving forward at four to 600 is this moonstone and blue colored gem bracelet. 
wonderful design. Love moonstones. Tiffany & Company 14 karat gold floral form brooch. Tiffany & Company, again, kind of a floral form with diamonds and colored gem accents. This is an 18 karat gold cherry brooch. We have a pair of 18 karat gold earrings that look like crescent rolls, which I like. Um, moving forward, we have a very sweet diamond engagement ring with all the details on our website. Here we have a colored gem Shirley Sapphire ring cabochon flanked by diamonds. These two rings are together, so one is jade and one is a colored gem with a seed pearl surround. Two Victorian brooches in this kind of starburst form with seed pearls, one with a diamond in the center and the other with a pearl. We have this nine karat gold watch bob. We have some sign pieces. So from the same estate, we have a Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold feather form ring and a Tiffany & Company, oop, upside down, heart form brooch with an arrow. We have this wonderful gold and platinum diamond bar pin a retro or vintage 14 karat gold brooch with colored gem and diamond accents. Sweet as can be, we have this 14 karat gold brooch in the form of a fairy with plique jour enamel wings and diamond accents. We have this 18 karat gold, bicolor gold I should say, Cartier style ring with diamond accents. We have this men's 14 karat gold diamond and ruby ring. We have this retro or vintage 14 karat gold clip with a central tapered band of pearls and ruby accents. And here we have this 14 karat gold pendant, circular in form with diamond accents. And interestingly enough, it's from some sort of ballroom dancing acknowledgement. Moving forward, this is a 14 karat gold mounted $5 US coin. Really sweet. This is interesting. This is a Tiffany & Company 14 karat gold ring with three opal cabochons. So very nice in oval form. Jumping forward, we have two colored gem and diamond rings. So one in floral form and one with emeralds and diamonds. Um, we have here a wide 14 karat gold articulated chain link bracelet. Here is a collection from Amerinex. So we have a large sterling and gem brooch, this bicolor gold or retro vintage 14 karat gold pin. We have a bar pin with a single pearl, a bicolor 14 karat gold floral form brooch with central amethyst. We have these two pins together, both 14 karat gold. One is Tiffany. We have this pair of 14 karat gold enamel and seed pearl earrings. We have these three brooches together. So these are marlins or swordfish, and I'm not sure what this one is, but their sweetest can be two or 14 karat gold. One is 18 karat gold. We have this 14 karat gold and pearl charm bracelet with three 14 karat gold oversized charms and it is accompanied by this very sweet 14 karat gold oversized circular charm with pearls and blue gems and a mermaid. So always like some mythological creatures. English silver humidor or cigar box with wood lined interior at three to 500. Retro or vintage brooches, one is 18, one is 14. Jumping forward, we have these two brooches together, one with a central pearl, and then we have this wonderful Victorian crescent moon brooch with seed pearls. We have this 14 karat gold diamond necklace with a diamond weighing approximately 0.90 carats. We have this Jack Gutschneider 14 karat gold enamel and diamond bracelet. Retro vintage group again of bow form brooches. All are bicolor gold, some with gems, some without. 14 karat gold Mariner's Link chain necklace. 14 karat rose gold chain necklace. From a local Mamaronek estate, we have this 14 karat bicolor gold and diamond bracelet at six to 900. Two 14 karat gold bicolor fobs. So one is white and rose, one is white and yellow. We have this wonderful silver peacock form pendant with plique jour wings and then additional enamel work with pearl accents. This is a 14 karat gold hinged bracelet. We have this Tiffany & Company 18 karat gold bracelet with blue enamel work. We have these, this is from a Manhattan estate. We have these three rings together with a butterfly clip, amethyst carved cameo, enamel and garnet. We have this watermelon tourmaline and diamond pendant oversized, beautiful polished watermelon tourmaline. We have this two pair of 18 karat gold and carved crystal earrings. One of the backings is replaced. The other one does imply that it is David Webb, but we are not saying that definitively. Two Tiffany and company items. We have this silver brooch with 14 karat gold and colored gems. And then we have this small Elsa Peretti Tiffany 
heart form pendant. We have this collection of Chinese silver jewelry. So amber, jade, carnelian, coral with enamel, malachite and enamel, tiger's eye and enamel, and then this enamel decorated dragonfly with coral cabochon eyes. We have this Cartier enamel corona um, cigar ring. We have this bicolor 14 karat gold bracelet. This is most surely German 19th century carved rock crystal and silver. We have this collection, so this whole collection here is all costume and silver jewelry. So some of the highlights here, this is Hobie, this is artist signed, this is Signer, um, this is Henrik Vinograd, this is um, Southwest Museum of Modern Art. This is just a wonderful checkerboard pattern, but of course the star of the show, in my opinion, is this VRBA oversized spider form brooch. It's sweet as can be in good condition. All of these items together, I believe are at five to 700. We have this carved jade plaque cameo design, 14 karat gold emerald mounted earrings with diamond accents. We have these three woven rings, again from the estate of Audrey Flashner. Some are gold, some are gold and silver. We have this four coin bracelet of Austrian Ducat coins. Um, they've been molded to kind of fit the wrist better. This is absolutely stunning. This is an Art Nouveau pair of lorgnettes and it's accented by diamonds and these colored gems. In my opinion, these would be demon toy garnets, but we're not saying definitively, but they are wonderful and in good working order. We have 11 14 karat gold bangle bracelets. We have a 14 karat gold chain with this little globe pendant and some of the continents are accented by colored gems or diamonds. This is a bracelet that is included in a lot with other items, but it's a double strand pearl bracelet with 14 karat gold diamond and pearl clasp. This is a pair of Victorian Taldia Perrin hinged bracelets, really quite nice, and they have been tested, they are 12 karat gold. Moving on, we have this wonderful 1.91 karat round brilliant cut diamond. It is set in 14 karat gold. It does come with a GIA. Color grade is H, clarity grading is I1. This is at three to 5,000. We have this 14 karat gold and opal pendant, nice large side size, beautiful play of colors within the opal. We have this silver enamel color gem and pearl brooch. Um, it is signed Verso. 14 karat gold opal and color gem hinged bracelet. We have this three piece suite all in 14 karat gold with this kind of geometric stylized fox head that has ruby eyes. This is 18 karat gold chain necklace with these white gold kind of accents and these knotted pendants. Three pair of earrings, two are 14 karat gold, one is 18 karat gold. These are in the style of Bucciolati. 18 karat floral form brooch with pearl accents. This is a very thick and heavy 14 karat gold Tobogos chain necklace. It's beautiful, retro vintage style. We have this panda jewelry. So 14 karat gold mounted panda ingot and a 14 karat gold bracelet with several panda coins. This is Etruscan Revival 22 karat gold with these colored gem cabochons. We have this one plus karat marquee cut diamond with a diamond accent set in 14 karat gold. Two 14 karat gold pieces of jewelry. We have this hinged bracelet with etched design and a 14 karat gold mounted amethyst brooch. 14 karat gold choker necklace. Moving forward, we have this wonderful 14 karat gold rope chain necklace with a 14 karat gold unicorn pendant, which I love. We have this small collection, so retro vintage. These are beautiful, ruffle circular earrings with colored gems and diamonds, and then it's accompanied by these two little floral form brooches. So we have two groupings of bands, two 18 karat gold. This one is emeralds and diamonds, and these two are emerald sapphires and diamonds. We have this approximately half carat diamond engagement ring. This is Art Deco. It is carved carnelian, enamel, and seed pearls. Uh, we will jump back. 14 karat gold bracelet missing the watch face, and there are some condition issues. We have this retro or vintage 14 karat gold ring with diamonds. Um, we have this beautiful 14 karat gold bicolor ring with a central diamond. Two 18 karat gold brooches, one with enamel. We have these two 14 karat gold knotted rings. 
we have this three piece suite of alligators in 14 karat gold. A pair of 14 karat gold lobster cufflinks. We have this 14 karat gold ring with a central emerald flanked by diamonds and additional diamond accents to the sides. One of my favorite pieces in the sale is this 14 karat gold bicolor mounted carved panther head. Moving forward to a whole little section of bracelets. 18 karat gold articulated bracelet. Again, just look at the beautiful way that this bracelet moves. This is 14 karat gold bicolor gold. So there are white and yellow links. We have this 18 karat gold double strand pearl bracelet. 14 karat XO bracelet, and this actually has earrings with it. This is 14 karat gold chain link bracelet, and this is absolutely wonderful. It's art deco, it's platinum, it's emeralds, it's diamonds. It came in on a walk in Wednesday and it's estimated at two to 3,000. Moving on to some lapis, we have this 14 karat gold and carved lapis bracelet, a 14 karat gold chain with a 14 karat gold mounted lapis oval form pendant. This is a collection of Mexican jewelry, but really nice. Um, this is Federico Jimenez. This is a beautiful signed caterpillar brooch, but again, it's just so fun. Look at this little guy. And there's all these additional clips to make sure that he stays wherever he's placed on a piece of clothing. Oversized with polished amethysts. Um, these floral form earrings with polished and carved amethysts. This is wonderful. This is probably just the epitome of quality. Silver with these polished amethyst terminals. We have this silver and amethyst brooch. And then this large amethyst bracelet that I just think is so wonderful and is such a statement. All of these pieces are being offered together from a Manhattan estate. We have this 14 karat gold chain necklace. We have this pair of 18 karat gold and ebonized wood earrings. These are by Vernier. They're beautiful, really so stylish and modern. So great and just articulated in design again. We have this 14 karat gold grouping. We have this chain with an amethyst pendant with a well-matched ring. We're going to jump back here. This is one of two Victorian snake brooches in a lot. This is in the style of Bulgari. It is 14 karat gold with diamonds, colored gem cabochons, and a central medallion. Very cool hinged buckle form earrings. So I just want to open these so you can see how they work. So they work like this. They could be worn and they're so cool and fun. 14 karat gold and the central portion is some sort of woven metal, but it's beautiful. We have this colored gem and diamond ring. We have this 18 karat gold emerald diamond and seed pearl ring. Victorian 14 karat gold locket with amethyst and diamonds. We have this nine karat English gold woven snake ring, um, which signified eternal love in, in Victorian times with these garnet faceted stones to their heads. We have this 14 karat gold carved carnelian seed pearl ring, 14 karat gold and large turquoise ring, a beautiful example of turquoise. There are a few condition issues, but it's absolutely stunning. We have this wonderful diamond necklace with two stacked diamonds. The measurements are on our website, 14 karat gold carved cameo of a gentleman. We have this 14 karat gold ring with a most surely garnet cabochon flanked by diamonds. 18 karat gold Viking ship ring. We have this Victorian, again, woven snake ring with a central garnet. I'm going to just move this forward quickly. This is a 14 karat gold opal. And I'm just going to show you the differences in how the play of color look in separate opals. So we can see that these are just two different examples, but really nice. I love the play of color in opals. I could go on about how it happens, but you can always call and ask me. This is a wonderful, this was it's also from the estate of Audrey Flashner. Um, and she would find pieces and she would make these beautiful works of art and jewelry. But if you look at each of these scarab form pendants, they're just so beautiful. It's some sort of art glass. And she does have a note on one of the back of these um, saying that they possibly are Tiffany. There's no, no reason for us to believe that, but there's also, they're so beautiful that I'm not surprised that she wrote that. It crossed my mind prior to seeing her note. Um, we are going to jump up to this piece, which is also Victorian. So this nice chain with a Victorian 14 karat gold locket displaying rose cut diamonds. But I like the unusual shape. We are going to jump over to this ring. So of course, this is a photograph. The ring is not here. It's currently at GIA, but this is what it looks like. Um, of course, it doesn't do it justice, and I wish the ring itself was here. But I do believe that the central stone will come back as Colombian. It will be back on Tuesday of next week, which is the 7th. 
um, and then it's flanked by these old European cut diamonds that are nearly a carat each. This by consigner provenance was given to her grandmother in the 1880s, around 1885. It is just extraordinarily beautiful. This is estimated at four to 6,000. I'm so excited to see where this goes. So now jumping over to one of the absolute stars of this auction. This is a Van Cleef & Arpels 18 karat gold and diamond bracelet. Came from a local Mamaroneck estate. It's beautiful. I mean, just look, I'm just gonna lay it on my wrist so you can just see the kind of size that it is. It's extraordinarily beautiful. These diamonds are the utmost of quality. And this is estimated at 40,000 to 60,000. Moving on to one last piece of couture in the sale, we have these two Louis Vuitton soft case suitcases. They're estimated at three to 500 and perfect for any travel over the holidays that may be coming up. And that wraps it up and we hope to see you on November 12th.